Okay. Um, first of all, Happy New Year, everybody. Uh, 2014 was a really fun year in terms of my art. <laughs> um, you know, I really got to see a huge growth in my YouTube followers. I mean, last year this time I had 10,000 subscribers. And in a year, I have had almost 10 times that. All right. So, um, obviously, you know, you guys are really supporting what I'm doing. And, um, you know, I'm really happy that you guys find this stuff useful all right and uh believe me it's my pleasure to be able to share all this stuff with you guys to um help you on your way okay i wish i had uh, well the way i think about it is like i'm trying to share what i wish i had um i'm primarily self-taught so um you know i know what it means to struggle on your own and try stuff out on your own experiment and develop your skill on your own um I, I never really had that much of a professional support. I had teachers here and there who really gave some guidance and I'm very grateful for them. But other than that, you know, um, it was primarily on my own. So, you know, fortunately we're in an age where we have the internet and stuff like that. So it's it's really a blessing. It's a beautiful thing to have something like this. So, um, you know, I'll continue sharing tips with you guys and giving you the help that I can. So um, in this video, I'm going to do a drawing of a flower or maybe a couple flowers and give you some tips on how you can apply uh, color now I'm going to do a series on adding color to pen and ink drawings but in this one I'm going to use um, just some simple watercolor right and I felt it would be a good idea to do it with some flowers first um, I may do other things like animals birds and stuff like that I love applying bir um, colors to um, pen and ink drawings of birds especially really colorful birds all right it's a lot of fun um, but in this one, I'm just going to do maybe a couple drawings of a flower or two and um, and have you guys see how I would apply watercolor to it. Now, I'm not going to do anything really serious. I'm just going to um, do a little drawing in pencil. Um, then I'm going to go over it in ink. And then I'm just going to use a uh, simple little watercolor brush I have here. Um, I have several, but I'll just use this one. And this is uh, this a little low Cornell uh, basic brush but it's you know it, it holds its own for doing simple stuff like this um as far as a watercolor i just have a simple little uh this windsor newton mobile uh set um didn't use this one much um and just for practice you know you can use if you have a little you know <laughs> well i know it's not the best quality okay so but just for practice just getting your your your, your feet wet in terms of handling um, watercolor it's fine to practice with that okay you don't have to go blow your money out in expensive stuff and not like what you do so you know it's fine to be economical when you're experimenting just testing the waters um, so I have a little small cup of water here I um, always have something to take out excess water from the from the uh, the brush um, and always have a piece of let's see if I can find a piece a piece of scrap paper around you know like I'm just using this piece um, and this is so basically you can test out the opacity like how thick the the um, the paint may be or how you know um, diluted whatever you could just test out it before you actually put it to pen put the uh, the brush to paper all right um, and this is a cool little set too you know, it comes with a little uh, brush so especially if you're doing like um, outdoor drawings and, and little paintings and stuff like that, it comes with a nice little brush. I forgot where I got this. Uh, I may have got it online. All right. Of course, when you're doing a flat out just pen and ink drawing, the ink accounts for everything. It accounts for value. It accounts for color in a sense, local color, all right, or local value. So in other words, if you're drawing a green and yellow banana, that means you have to be able to distinguish those with value see what I mean so with here you're not you know it's not necessarily the ink is not fulfilling that role so basically you can use the ink for suggesting texture um, outline of course and leave the rest to for the color to define so say for example you have a form I'm going to show compare and contrast so you have two forms like that and you're going to go over it with ink it may be best sometimes you'll find an experiment you know try it out you'll find that sometimes it's not necessary to do this but you may just want to do this see what I did I'm varying the weight of the line and I'm also leaving some of it open so if I erase it you'll see what I mean if I can find my eraser
see that? So if you're going over this um, with some watercolor, let's say, and of course when you're applying watercolor, always apply it lightly at first, all right? And also another thing with a brush, you should be, if you wet a brush, so really, I mean, this is basic stuff, but for those who may not know, all right? You should always be able to make a point with your brush like that. See that? You can know when your brushes are like really worn when they start <laughs> looking like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? And this may be okay for general stuff, general application, but if you're you know concerned with doing like really fine small details and you know this brush may not be effective if that's the way your brush is. So you should always be able to make a point like that. Alright? So really quickly say for example I'm gonna apply some paint to this. So I'm just gonna apply a little bit. I'm gonna dilute it here. Alright? So See, this is just basic copy paper, so you can see the paper is starting to crumple. And also, that's, I guess that's, I should mention that whenever you, in terms of using paper, you should consider using like a, you know, a heavyweight multimedia drawing paper, or just use watercolor. Watercolor pen, pencil can, <laughs> watercolor paper, um, tend, tends to be very expensive, um, but you know, it's worth it. You could just buy a big sheet and cut it up for practice. That's what I do. See what I mean? So the form is more open here. Here it's more closed. And this this helps more with creating a sense of volume. You know what I mean? Instead of this. Because um, you're going to be defining this. So say for example, I'm going to go in a little bit deeper now and start applying uh, a deeper tone. Of course, you should make sure your, your color dries as well. Unless you're working in like in a wet and wet kind of a, a method. And another thing with watercolor, okay, um, a lot of times it will dry in ways that you can't predict. But that, that I think, to me, some people like having control over what they will look like, and then you have to use less water. But for me, I like seeing the effects. You know, I like I like that sense of uh, surprise. <laughs> you know, like it, it just it's just really a beautiful medium to use. And it's good to let it work on its own. So see the, the difference I'm suggesting here? Here it's more controlled, it's more flat. Here it's more open to me, you see? So you, someone may like this better, and someone may like this, but I tend to uh, prefer this when I'm working with color because it tends to open the form some more and let the, the color do most of the work. Here, the ink is, is more defining the form and it creates a, a flatter outline, all right? But as I said, you know, this may work in your favor in terms of the type of art you're creating, so it's up to you, all right? So uh, let's get started with this. Um, so I'm going to draw a little flower here. And you should try to draw different types of flowers. Um, I, I was actually thinking of just doing the the pencil off camera. But, you know, I figured a lot of you guys always ask me how I do the, the drawings. You like seeing how I develop it. So here I'm using just basic shapes. And then, you know, and then you'll see it develop. Alright, so here we have the uh, pencil drawings, and I'm going to go over them with ink, and uh, you're going to see how I'll render them. Now, I am going to be, um, as I said, I'm not going to render them as strongly as if I were just doing a pen and ink drawing. I'm going to leave some room and space for the, uh, the colors to work. So um, first, I'm going to apply these colors very lightly, and you'll see um, how I build the layers eventually, all right?
that's pretty much it. So um, it was a really fun drawing. Hopefully you guys got some some useful tips from this. Um, sometimes you have to go over and just touch things up here. I'm just adding some some little stipples to accentuate the texture right here. I think I would have needed a smaller brush to really do that as effective as I'd want it. Yep, and uh, that's pretty much it. So, you know, with, with watercolor though, you have to be careful not to overwork it too much. It's easy to overwork watercolor. It's a very translucent and fragile uh, medium and you have to treat it in that way. You know, be very gentle with the brush, very gentle with the color. You know, don't, don't overwork it. Just let it move with the water in a sense. Like there are some places where I put the the water down and I would just let the ink, the color just run. And um, you have to sometimes just let go and let the color, <laughs> you know, just, just let it do its work. And it's fun, you know, there's uh, a lot of things you can do with ink. You can combine it with watercolor here. Um, I'll do some drawings as well with combining it with colored pencils. You'll see how I do that as well. So, um, you know, hopefully you guys will uh, learn something from this and you can apply it to your own drawings.